Fire! Away! A fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi silver. The Lone Ranger. Whenever men gathered around the campfire in the early days of the western United States, stories were told of the masked rider of the plains. His strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, made it possible for him to bring criminal after criminal to justice, even when all the forces of the law had failed. It was he more than any other man who made possible the winning of the West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Krogan's Bluff. Tell them waiting for us. I am Silver. Away! <laughs> the little town of San Salvo lay at the foot of one of the natural wonders of the West. A great mass of brilliant red sandstone streaked with yellow rose from the plain. But the men and women of the surrounding country had come to accept the bluff as a matter of course. And as old Shep Harper rode along the main street of San Salvo, he raised his voice in song, but he never lifted his eyes toward the towering rock. Go tell him, Susie! Go tell him, Susie! Go So? It just so. See, his lawyer Lake in his office here. I got business with him. He's there. But the chef, listen. Huh? Lawyer Lake's a mighty, mighty shrewd cuss. I wouldn't go trust him none too far. He ain't but Lake in town. Couldn't see no other lawyer because there ain't none. Besides, he can't swindle me none. All I'm having him do is make out my will. Will? <laughs> what do you want of a will? You ain't fixing to die, are you? Me? Gosh, no. Only I want to make sure Molly gets my ranch and livestock if something happens. I don't want no doggone relatives they ain't never seen to come poking in here. Molly's coming to live with me, and I aim to make sure she's well took care of. The lake's inside, Chip. But remember this. Keep your spectacles good and clean while you're dealing with his kind. Don't you worry. Hey, watch my dog and horse, will you? Mm-hmm. Good morning, Mr. Lee. Well, Chef, glad to see you. I fixed up your will and testament the way you outlined it. Good enough. I'm here to sign her up and have it all set legal. Uh, sit right down here and look it over. Make sure it's the way you want it. I'll go in the other room and ask some friends to come and witness your signature. All right. Uh, just make yourself comfortable, Chef. 
I won't be long. And take your time. I read slow and doggone careful. Brannigan, he's out there now. Old Shep? Yeah. Now get this straight, Brannigan. If we play it right, we'll be the new owners of Shep Harper's big ranch. There ain't nothing I'd like better. It'll be a tough lot of luck for that granddaughter of Shep's to come here and find the old man dead and her left without a dime. But she'll have to make the best of it. <laughs> Maybe you'll feel real generous and find her a job in your law office. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's a handsome girl. <laughs> Maybe I will. What's my part? I can't use you as a witness because you're the one that's inherit the property. I'll call Lefty from outside to witness the will. I'm to inherit the spread, eh? Uh, we'll fix some sub sort sort of story about Shep Harper owing you a lot of cash. You can tell that around a couple of places between now and the time that old Shep dies. Tell it that he owes me money, eh? Yeah. But uh, what about now, the... you pass him as you go out and bump into him to knock his glasses off. Then I switch papers and he signs this one. It won't work, Lake. Why? That girl comes tomorrow and the first thing she hears from Shep is that he's made a will. You know how important that'll seem to an old coot like him? He'll tell everyone about it. No, he won't. You don't figure on killing him right off, do you? That won't do either. It'll raise too many questions. Brannigan, Chip Harper is going to starve to death. And you're going to help him. Go on. We'll go further after I get his name on the will. Now remember, eyeglasses. He can't read without them. Right. Now come on. Can you make it out all right, Chip? Oh, sure, sure thing. Ain't much to it. Just that I leave all I got tomorrow. Eh? Uh, this is Brannigan. You know him, don't you? Mm -hmm. I reckon so. Glad to see you again, Harper. I, uh, I gotta be leaving. I... Oh, hey, look out! My specs! Oh, confound it. I tripped right over that chair. Say, I'm sorry about your spectacles. Dad, rat it all. Why don't you watch where you're going? Oh, unfortunate, unfortunate, Shep. I'm sorry, Shep. Uh, look, I'll buy you a new pair. Oh, I got extra ones to home. But hang it, I had to send all the way to St. Joe for them. You send for some more and I'll pay for them. I'll see you later, Mr. Lake. You're right. Ain't he to witness my signing or something? Well, um, Brannigan was in a hurry, Shep. Left is out in front. Uh, I'll call him in. Oh, Lefty. Yeah? Come in here, will you? I want you to witness a signature. At dusk that evening, the Lone Ranger and Tonto made camp near San Salvo. While they ate, they studied the plateau that reared high above the surrounding ranches and... Grogan's Bluff, they call it, Tatter. It's named after the man who built a bridge to reach the top. Bill Grogan. Why him go there? For the same reason men have always gone to places that were hard to reach. He thought there must be something worthwhile when he got there. There have been a lot of rumors about an ancient tribe of Indians who buried a treasure on that plateau. Oh, that's not true. No. I don't know how the story started, but Grogan believed it, and he made a pretty thorough search. Uh. There have been a lot of guesses at how he managed to build the bridge. It goes across a canyon fully 200 feet deep. What's that? An explosion. It's all right, so just take it easy, boy. Here, you can see it, Hunter. Down canyon? Yes. Just as we were speaking about that bridge. Look, it's been blown up. Ah. Uh. Why that happened? I suppose the men in town did it. It's been talked about before. The bridge wasn't safe anymore, and there was always the risk that someone would cross to the plateau and cave in the bridge, or be caught in the plateau when a heavy wind destroyed the only way to get back to safe ground. No, bridge gone. It's probably a good thing. It's all right, Silver. That little scare, didn't you, old boy? Well, it's all right now. i come to wonder. You wonder what, Kimasabi? If it's all right... Why, them blow-up bridge. Axe do same work. Cost plenty less. Well, we'll ask about that when we get to town tomorrow. I'll count on you to learn all about it, Tutter. San Salvo isn't a town I care to visit wearing a mask. The next day, the stage arrived in San Salvo. Oh, 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 oh. There's the mail sack. Fetch them some water for them horses. Wee! Look at the passenger. <laughs> the only passenger was a girl of 18. The guard helped her to the ground. Uh, there's your baggage, miss. And Lawyer Lake stepped forward to meet her. How do you do? You must be Molly Harper. Oh, uh, oh yes. My name is Lake, Miss Harper. At your service. Well, I, I expected my grandfather to meet me. I thought he'd be here, too, but I haven't seen him since yesterday. 
I'm his lawyer, though, so perhaps you'll allow me to serve you. I, I haven't the slightest idea where his ranch is. Uh, do you know? Do I know? <laughs> well, I should say so. I guess everyone around here knows Chef Harper's ranch. It's one of the finest in the county. Really? Yes, indeed. Well, I'll take your bag and find a rig to drive you out there. I don't like to put you to trouble, Mr. Lane. No trouble at all, not a bit. In fact, it'll be a pleasure. Oh, well, how nice. I thought the Western men were, uh, well, not like the Easterners. Well, we'll try to make you like the country, Miss Harper. Get up, man. Get up. There she goes again. All right, all right, all right. Oh, Lefty. Yes, sir. Get that team and rig out. We'll drive Miss Harper to Chef's place. Right. Couple of visitors at the house. Yep, that's why Grandpa didn't meet me in town. I don't recognize those horses. Do you, Lefty? Me? No. Never seen neither one of them before. Say, that white one sure looks powerful, though. Look. That, that man is mad. What in tarnation? Say, here, stranger, what's the Who idea? Who are you? Well, of all the cussed nerve. Who are you is the question. Quiet, Lefty. I'll handle this. Just who are you, stranger? I came to learn who owns this ranch. I haven't seen any of the hands around the place yet. This is Shep Harper's property. And it was a robbery you're planning, you might I as well... I do know your lake. I am. Well, that's what I thought. I've heard descriptions of you. Is this a hold No. Please don't be frightened by my mask. Does Harper own a dog? Sure. What about it? dog about the size of a collie. That's it. Grub steak, he calls the critter. But where is Grandpa? Have you seen him? Grandpa? You're his granddaughter? Yes. From the east? Yes. We don't propose to stand here answering your questions. We're all the men. I don't know. And I have no further questions. Come, Tonto. Oh, he come. A savage... Oh, Mr. Lane, what have they done to Grandpa? I, I don't know. Where is he? Have you murdered him? Come, Kimasabi. Hey, the lady asked you a question. Oh, Silver, away! Come here, Mr. I don't want to ask any more questions right now, Tonto. No, what we do. We're going back and have another look at the ground near that bridge. Come on, Silver! Although we know several things. The back trail led to old Shep Harper's home. It must have been Shep who crossed the bridge with his dog. Not right. And before he came back, the bridge was blown away. That means that he either was on the bridge when it was destroyed, which would have meant certain death, or he's on the plateau, which means equally certain death, but not as quick. Ah, uh, him starve on plateau. There isn't any way on earth for him to get off of there. Maybe build no bridge. It would take weeks, Tato, and he'd be dead long before anyone could cross. I wonder if we can't make him hear us. You fire a shot, maybe. I will. Hello, Harper! Him not answer. Nothing but the echo. I wonder if this is murder. Maybe girl want ranch. Doesn't seem that she'd plot the murder of an old man. No answer, Kimasabi. How can we get to Grogan's bluff? Come to not know. Hello. Now where did you come from? Uh, that matter, old boy. Looks as if you've had a hard time of it. Mm, dog, plenty tired. Here. Yeah. Let me pull some of those brambles off. Well, what do you want? Tonto. He acts as if he wanted me to follow him. Uh, wait. You look. What? He track a dog. Well, this is the same dog, the one ah. that crossed the bridge. Is there another way to get back from that plateau? If there is. I've never heard about it. We follow dog. See where him go. All right, boy, lead the way. We'll see where you go. We go on foot? Lead the horses, Tonto. Come on. Dog go long top canyon. Look at where that dog's going. He's going over the edge of the canyon. Come on. There might be a trail that we know nothing about. Here's where he went down. Now we'll... Oh, no use, Tonto. There is a trail to the bottom, but it's less than four inches wide. Only a dog could make it. But now we sure a man. There's no question about it. That's Shep Harper's dog, and Shep is on the other side. He's hurt or helpless, or he'd have answered our cries. We've got to find some way to help him. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Shep Harper's dog barked at the Lone Ranger and Tonto from the opposite rim of the canyon. He seemed to be begging them to help his master. But only a dog could descend the narrow ledge to the canyon floor and scale the other side. That dog can't understand why we don't go and help his master. You got rope? Maybe let Tonto down to bottom? And that wouldn't help, Kimasabi. You still couldn't get up the other side. Uh, and what we do? Well, the dog can cross. How can we use that dog? Maybe rope reach over canyon. The rope would be too heavy. The dog couldn't possibly climb that wall with a rope tied to him. Wait. I have a scheme. Tonto, get your bow and a good arrow. There's some fishing cord in my saddlebag. Here, Silver. Do you see that heavy boulder? Uh, I'll just see it. Uh, here we are. This cord is light but strong. Tie one end to your arrow. Uh, then what Tonto do? Shoot the arrow past that big rock on the right-hand side. Uh, shoot now? Yes, and look out for the dog. Dog, watch what we do. If only that dog will do what we want. Go ahead. Let the arrow loose. Uh, there it go. It looks like a good shot. Perfect. Fetch it back, boy. Fetch it back. Dog, look at arrow. Come on, old fellow. Fetch it here. He's picking up the arrow. Here, hold the cord. Pay it out as the dog carries the arrow. I'm calling the dog from down this way. If he'll just go around back of the big rock over there. Here, boy. Here, boy. Come on. He'll come. That's it, fellow. Bring it here. Pay out the cord, Tato. The dog followed a natural impulse to retrieve. With the arrow in his mouth, he descended to the canyon floor once more. Then, with the Lone Ranger encouraging him every inch of the way, he crawled along the narrow shelf on the near side of the cliff. Progress was slow, but finally he reached the top and... Good boy, good for you. <laughs> now we'll get to your master. Tie the, tie the lariats, both of them, to the cord. We'll pull them around that rock and fasten them on the side. Then we go over, huh? With two strong ropes across that chasm, we can reach the other side. Molly Harper stayed at Shep's ranch, but in spite of the efforts of every run around the place to make her feel at home, she became more and more worried about her grandfather's absence. Ma Meggs, who handled the housework and cooking, found it almost impossible to reassure her and... Oh, now, Miss Molly, I can recollect a time when Shep was gone from here for over six weeks. We never know where he was at, but he come back spry as ever. But it's been a week now, and he knew I'd be here. He wouldn't stay this long and not leave some word for me. Well, you can't tell. He's pretty absent-minded sometimes. Now, don't you fret none. He's all right. No news is good news, I always say. Oh, I hope so. Um, one thing I wanted to make a mention of, Miss Molly, and I hope you won't think I'm an old fool for bringing it up. What is it, Mrs. May? It's about that lawyer gent, Mr. Lee. Oh, oh yes. He's been calling frequent. Now, uh... I wouldn't get too friendly with him if I was you. Not till your grandpa gets back. Well, he seems very gentlemanly. Uh-huh. Well, seems, sometimes ain't. He's always been friendly with Lefty Horner and Bat Brannigan, and they ain't a more worthless couple of lives than them two. Judge a man by his company, I always say. Brannigan? Mr. Lake mentioned him. Didn't he loan Grandpa a lot of money? Oh, not I know of. Well, that's funny. Mr. Lake said he did. Well, I never got into your grandpa's personal affairs. In fact, Mr. Lake hinted that if something happened to grandpa, I I mightn't have the ranch here. Oh, that's loco. Why, your grandpa always figured leaving it to you. That's why he wanted you here. I don't know. I, I just wish he'd come back. Another week elapsed. Then one afternoon, as Molly was sitting on the front porch, three men rode up to the ranch house. This is Meg. Who are those men with Mr. Lake? <laughs> a big one is Brannigan. The other one is Lefty that I made mention of. Fine pair of sidewinders. I'm going into the house. Good afternoon, Miss Molly. How do you do, Mr. Lake? Uh, I'm afraid I come as a bringer of news that won't be pleasant. About Grandpa? Indirectly. Oh, this is Mr. Brannigan. Howdy, miss. I'm downright glad to know you. Brannigan I... just returned to town. He's been away for two weeks. 
In fact, he left the same day your grandfather came to my office. Well? well that was the day I signed my name to Grandpappy's will, Miss Molly. Oh. I'll do the talking. Uh, go ahead, then. Uh, Miss Molly, that afternoon your grandfather met Brannigan and told him he was going to Grogan's Bluff. Grogan Bluff? Uh, you've heard about the bluff, of course. Yes, but why should Grandpa go there? He had some secret reason, but he didn't tell Brannigan what it was. Bradigan left town, and when he came back and told me where Shepard started for, I realized an awful truth. What? Well, you know, there'd been a meeting of the town board, and it was decided to destroy the bridge to the bluff. It was a safety measure, you see. There'd been a handbill in town for some time announcing that the explosion would take place sometime after sundown and warning everyone to stay away. And... And Grandpa went there? Well, that's what I'm afraid is the case. That he might still be there. If he went there, Miss Molly, he would be starved to death long before this. Oh, well, that's what's happened then. Well, I, I can't begin to tell you how sorry I am. Oh, I, I knew something had happened to him. Poor Grandpa. Oh, why didn't someone tell him? Why wasn't he warned? I didn't know about the blasting plans my own self when he told me he was going there. Dad read it all, Lake. If only I'd come back to town ten days ago, there still would have been time to send a rescue party to get him. Even that would be almost impossible. As it stands, though, he's dead for sure. Oh. <laughs> now, uh, better go into the house and cry it out. Then she'll be better able to listen to the rest of what we have to tell her. Right. I hate to scheme a swell girl like her out in her inheritance. Shut up, Brannigan. Remember, it's out of your hands now. I know. You got that wheel of ships with you, Lee? Right here in my pocket. As soon as we've given her time to cry it out, we'll go in and talk to her. Hmm. Look what's coming. I saw him before. Who is he? I don't know, Brannigan. But I saw him right here once before. I, I had no idea you'd be here, Lake. I heard that Brannigan had returned to town. Well, what do you want? Where's Harper's granddaughter? That's none of your business. It's probably in the house. Now, see him ask me. You can't go in there. No? By what authority do you plan to stop me? I'll tell you why I plan to stop you. This year ranch is Come mine. Come again. We'll go inside. Perhaps, stranger, if you tell me your business, I'd be more willing there, to talk there, to you. There, now, honey. You just have a good cry and you'll feel the sight better. Who are you? A friend of Chef Harper. Oh, you, your new grandpa? Yes. Mr. Lake just told me he's, he's dead. How do you know that, Lake? He went to Grogan's Bluff. No one except Brannigan knew he was going there the day the bridge was destroyed. Didn't he return from Grogan's Bluff? Obviously not. He hasn't been seen. By this time, he starved to death there. So you brought that news to Miss Harper? Well, I thought she should know. Just how did he happen to go to Grogan's Bluff that day? Well, I don't know. He didn't tell me why he went there. He didn't? No. Now what are you asking all these here questions for? Ain't none of your business. Brannigan, can't you think of any reason why Shep might have gone to Grogan's Bluff? No, I can't. Of course, Lake, you plan to have a rescue party go and try and get him off. No use now. He'd have died long before this. Well, it was nearly two weeks ago he went there. I see. We, uh, we'd better get out of here and leave Miss Harper with more Megs. It's been quite a shock to her. There are a few details to settle first, Lake. Well, please be quick. You told Miss Harper, of course, the terms of her grandfather's will? How do you know what them terms are? The chef made a will, didn't he? Yes, you told me he did, Mr. Lake. Have I denied the fact? Of course he made a will. And his ranch and property goes to his granddaughter? Well, uh, as a matter of fact... Doesn't it? No, it don't. It goes to... How do you know about it, Brannigan? The fact is, Brannigan was promised this ranch to pay off a large debt Harper owed. Is that true? Yes. Shep Harper's will gives everything he owned to his dear friend and benefactor, Mr. Brannigan. I can't believe that, Grandpa. That ain't true. It ain't so, Lake, and you know it. I'm sorry. I'm not going to discuss the point. I have the will here. It's there in writing, and it's witness. I witnessed the signing of it by Shep Harper Moon, sir. Uh, Miss Molly, if, if you know your grandfather's signature, I, I'm sure you'll recognize this. It, it, that is, it looks like Grandpa's right. I don't believe it. May I see that? Here. I'm afraid, Miss Harper, that this is perfectly legal. Then Shep didn't know what he was signing. I know for sure he never owed Brannigan no cash. I'm in no position to discuss that matter more. There's the will, and it's not for me to argue. The law will have to decide. If Shep is dead, Miss Harper, there isn't a thing that you can do about this. You'll just have to move off this ranch. Oh. I tried to prepare you for this, Molly, without repaying any confidences. You'll remember I hinted you might need employment. Yes, Mr. Lake. You fight that there will, Molly. Fight it tooth and nail. That ain't the way Shep planned things at all. It will do no good to fight it, will it, Lake? Not a bit. The only way that will could be made void would be for Shep himself to make a new one. And he can't do that. 
Why? Huh? Why? Why can't Shep make a new will? Because he's dead. Oh, that was merely your idea, Brannigan. He couldn't get off Grogan's bluff with the bridge gone. He could. In fact, Brannigan, he did. You know, I'm going right at the well, end. Look at that. You. Wait, you ordinary double-crossing crook. I ought to drill you where you stand. It's a frame-up. Don't you. go for your gun, Brannigan. My friend has you covered. Let me watch him. The sheriff has come along with Shep, just to make sure that you don't get too hard to handle. Blake. Blake, what's gone wrong? I'll tell you what went wrong. My dog, old Grubstake, got off from the bluff and found that masked man. We managed with the dog's help to reach the bluff, you see. And that pitfall you fixed for me to fall into worked just right, Bannigan. I'd have done, been done for if the masked man hadn't got to me and fixed me where I was hurt and took care of me while we seen what your scheme was. Grandpa, why did you go to the bluff? I went there because Brannigan says you'd come in early and seen the bluff and wanted to look her over and that you was waiting there for me. I was a doggone old fool to swallow that yarn. I see the whole thing now. I see why you smashed my glasses, Brannigan, so's I wouldn't know a different will was stuck before me by that crooked lawyer. Thank goodness you're back, Grandpa, and, and all right. I'm as right as rain now. The masked gent and his engine part are better than any sawbones I ever knowed when it comes to patching up an old galoot like me. Oh, Shep, why in Tonker didn't you let us know you was back? I wanted to. But the gent there figured it was best to set tight and see what game was being played. Well, we seen. And now we can jail them critters so as it won't be played again. You've heard all you need to, Lake. Outside. I demand to be heard. Make your demands in court. The judge is paid to listen to you. All of you, out where the sheriff is waiting. Stranger, doggone, I gotta do something for you. It's your old dog that did it, Chef. Go on in, Grubstake. You're home, too. Oh, 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 Just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.